Welcome to ONW News, the monthly feature about development company New Westland, about new living in Westland. Episode 3 today focuses entirely on the floating Dutchman, architect Kuhn Oldhaus. Kuhn appears as a central figure in television programs worldwide. The reason for all this interest? Kuhn is introducing a new concept, floating houses, apartments, sport complexes and so on, and that is generating interest worldwide. That's right. Anticipating the changes caused by climate change and urbanization and finding alternative solutions to the way cities deal with water. Kuhn is supervising architect on the new water project. As part of a new development in Westland, 600 floating homes will be built, including a floating apartment complex, a project which is attracting a great deal of international attention. Camera crews arrive one after the other. This is Chinese television, who made a program about Kuhn and the new water a few weeks ago. Here, they are actually standing in the middle of an area which will ultimately be flooded. When you came here 50 years ago, many things were happening over the water. People were using the water for infrastructure much more. To foreigners, it remains a mysterious phenomenon. How do we deal with so much water in the Netherlands, especially as we live below sea level? The new water offers a different approach to an ancient problem, spectacular, particularly for an architect, says Kuhn. The new water project will be the first time in the Netherlands that land will be deliberately inundated, that we will flood an area that was originally pumped dry and where we will then build a large-scale housing project. Apartment complexes and terraced houses, real high-density buildings, combined with green. Water, greenery and people, how can you achieve a perfect balance? An important reason for the realization of the new water project is flooding. Westland has been flooded several times. Creating a lake here will provide ample space for water storage during periods of heavy rainfall. Moreover, floating houses will never be at risk during high water situations. And this is what makes it so interesting for other countries. As future cities grow, so do the dangers of climate change. In the current world crisis that we're in, we need to rethink cities from scratch. Eight of the ten largest cities in the world are located on the coastline. And nearly half of the entire world's population lives within 90 miles of the sea. But what if we could build cities that ride the rising tides? So we have to find new solutions, not fighting against the water, but living with the water. Kuhn Olthais wants to build entire cities that float, using building blocks of foam slabs encased in a concrete shell. Putting them together, he can create platforms as large as 400,000 square feet. That's the size of two city blocks. That gives us a lot of very stable, large-scale foundations on which you can do almost anything. You can build towers on it, apartments, uh, put trees on it. Because of his expertise, architect Kuhn Oldhouse is now consulted from all over the world. Spectacular projects in places like Dubai, the Antilles and the Maldives. Oldhouse is like a little boy who wants to use his building blocks to change the world, literally. Imagine you have a normal city. There are buildings, apartments or skyscrapers. They're all next to each other. Let's say it's Manhattan, roads, streets in between, and water surrounding everything. If you want to expand... Building on water has two functions, not only to offer protection against water, but also to make a city much more flexible. Closer to reality than you may think, an example named by Old House is the RDM campus in Rotterdam, where many new techniques have been incorporated already. Here we see Rotterdam, a scale model of Rotterdam. What you see is that almost 20% of the city is water. But the ships which normally dock here are constantly getting bigger, 
because they carry more containers. Consequently, these ships have to use the Mars Delta, so large areas here will become empty. What's happening now is that these areas will be used for urban development. One of the areas where this concept will be trialled is here at the Rotterdam campus, RDM campus. In several years' time, you can expect to see floating homes here, or floating parks, schools, a truly inspirational place. The best thing about a city like this is that it becomes much more flexible. Look, I've got an iPhone here, and an iPhone has apps. By buying apps, I can adapt the phone to suit my specific needs. It's the same with a city. We're going to work with city apps. That means we're going to make floating components such as houses or parking places or recreational areas. And now you can start clicking to create your city. For example, a floating stadium for Rotterdam can be brought over the Mars and be attached to the city. When it's not needed any longer, it can be moved or added to, or even moved to another city. There will come a time where cities will be dynamic and that new things can easily be ordered to suit. More flexible, but also safer. Professor Chris Savenbergen is chairman of the Flood Resilience Group of UNESCO, an institution that researches the risks of rising water levels. Floating buildings are much safer, he says. Every year we see that disasters in this area are growing. It mainly concerns those cities which are developing extremely fast, where we can guide growth in such a way to minimize their vulnerability. He is not surprised that there is so much international interest in this area. This concept and technology is sought after internationally, which gives us a fantastic export product. We can now sell our knowledge and technology, not flower bulbs or clogs anymore, but modern floating houses. The new water project comprises of 600 floating homes, including a floating apartment complex flooding the polder instead of pumping it dry all the time. Architect Oldhouse is convinced that this will happen to many more polders in Holland. And then you'll see that this will happen in three or four hundred polders in Holland in the next 20 or 30 years. And so this pioneer has a new Dutch export product. Pioneering for Westland in order to create a nice way of life. Homes will be pleasant with a close relationship to the water. Pioneering for the Netherlands because it means changing the way they deal with reclaimed land. By allowing more fluctuation, the land will become wetter. And it is international pioneering because we can show the world how we can find another way to plan our cities. Coming up in ONW News in the next few months, which economic opportunities does this development offer? And what is it like to live in a floating house? And so on. ONW News, every month on WOS. <laughs>